Hello and welcome to Dr. Wade's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at organic chemistry and importantly we're going to be looking at halogenoalkanes and the elimination reaction. So by the end of today's lesson you should be able to do the following two things. We should be able to outline the elimination mechanisms of haloalkanes to make alkenes. and We should be able to explain the role of the reagent as both a base and a nucleophile. And we'll see that that results in two different possible reactions. So we'll have a look at the mechanism for elimination in just a moment. The conditions for when we get an elimination reaction, that is when molecules are, are small molecules removed, uh, is when we have sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide dissolved in ethanol with a haloalkane. And we've seen this before, similar, we had sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide dissolved in, in water, then we got substitution. But this time, if it dissolved in ethanol, we get a slightly different reaction. And this time, the hydroxide ion that forms from the sodium hydroxide, the potassium hydroxide, instead of attacking the delta positive carbon, when it's in ethanol, we get attack of the hydrogen, and therefore it's acting as a base. The bond from the hydrogen goes between the two carbons and then we lose the bond between the carbon and the bromine. So we have three arrows here and we form a carbon-carbon double bond. The result is we end up with an alkene forming, the carbon-carbon double bond. And we have a molecule of water along with the bromide ion, or the halo ion, falling off. So there's a mechanism when we have sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide dissolved in ethanol. Instead of the substitution reaction, we get this elimination of the, the halide ion. So we have two possible reactions when we have potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide and our haloalkane. Here we've got our bromopropane, or 2-bromopropane. If we have OH- dissolved in water, and we do this in reflux conditions, and we'll talk about reflux in a, a future lesson, then we get a nucleophilic substitution reaction, and we form the alcohol group. And in this reaction 1, The sodium hydroxide, or the hydroxide ion even, is acting as a nucleophile and it's attacking the delta positive carbon. So in summary there, in aqueous conditions, we get nucleophilic substitution. And the OH- is acting as a nucleophile. So the lone pair of electrons are donating to the delta positive carbon. However, if we look at reaction 2, we have hydroxide ions again from potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. But if we do this in ethanol, and again we do this in reflux conditions, instead of the OH- attacking the delta positive carbon, it attacks a hydrogen that's adjacent and the bond goes between the two carbons and then from the carbon bromine onto the bromide. And in that instance, the OH- is accepting a hydrogen ion or accepting a proton, which means that the OH- is acting as a base and we get an elimination reaction in ethanol. So in anhydrous conditions, that's without water, and we get those conditions by using ethanol, we get elimination reaction occurring and the OH- acts as a base because it accepts a proton. That's an important distinction to know between those two reactions. So just to recap there, you should be able to outline the elimination mechanism for the haloalkane, 
and you should also be able to explain the role of the reagent, that's the, the hydroxide ion, as either a base or a nucleophile in either the substitution or the elimination reactions. Okay, that's all for this lesson. I'll say bye for now.